Hello, Loveland Magazine viewers. Today, we have somebody very, very special in the house. So this is our first segment of 2022 for What's in Loveland's DNA. Now, it's been a while, guys. We haven't done a segment in a while, but mainly because of the COVID concerns and whatnot. But you know what? We're here today. We're better than ever. And what way to start off a new year with Coach Darnell Parker in the house. Now, some of you may know him as Loveland High School's women's basketball coach, um, community, I don't necessarily want to say activist, but in the community, very active on his mentality, what you've been through in your life, um, pretty much all across the boards. He just got married. Yes. He's a family man. He has children. Kids are in sports. Yes. I know your, your one girl's doing awesome yes. in basketball. So... Coach, what is going on? Tell us about uh, how you've been doing. Well, thanks for having me, Cass. Absolutely. I, pre I appreciate it. It's, it's been a, a whirlwind journey over the last, uh, I'd say, probably almost over you know, a year and a half, two, two years, just with the different things and you know, the coaching and the, you know, the personal uh, life stuff with the, with the cancer, I'm sure we'll get into, and then all of um, you know, my personal life as far as getting, getting married and you know, my kids. You know, they're growing up. I have one in a... Uh, uh, a sophomore in college at UC, and a Ooh. sophomore in, in high school. So I mean, it's it is absolutely been been a whirlwind. The last Are you feeling a little old? I, I that? am. I am. It's crazy <laughs> that in, in two years I will have you know there will be no kids in the house. Uh, that that's empty nester. Empty nest. Wow, know. and you're and you're young. Yes, I will. To be I'm, an empty I, nester. I'm only 44 right now. And yeah. Be before 50, so. Dang, you know, you know, living the living the life you know, after we get through all this, you yeah. know, rough patch. So I might start over and have, have a little one. That's what I'm saying. Ma knows? Maybe another <laughs> midlife crisis yeah, or something who, who, going on. Yeah, you never say never. <laughs> exactly. Never say never. So Darnell, I really just want to start from the beginning, okay? Yeah. And 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 guys, I will tell you, Darnell and I, we've known each other for about I'd say three years now. So. I'm going to act like I've never met him so you guys can get the full story. Otherwise, I'd be like, okay, this, 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 and this. Yeah. We're not going to do that. We're going to start from the beginning. I know what you're going to tell me, but I want everybody to hear your Absolutely. life story because they see you on the court, right? They see what you're going through, especially in the cancer community, but they don't know you. So that's where I want to get today. So let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? And kind of tell me your background with your family, you know, sports. How did you get into this? How did your family kind of lead you into that mentality, that direction? Yeah, I, I am originally born and raised in uh, Finley, Ohio, uh, about three hours from here, north uh, northwest Ohio. My mom still still lives there. Uh, uh, my parents lived there, you know, my entire my entire life. My dad passed away a year ago, but uh, so mom mom is still there, and I, I get there frequently and um, grew up in a you know. It, a town that's very similar to Loveland. I mean, okay. Finley's probably now a little bit bigger than, than Loveland, but the, the dynamics is very, very similar right. as far as the community and and how they, they bond together and things like like that. And I've been playing sports uh, since since I was since I was born. My dad was a college athlete. Uh, uh, he went to he actually grew up in Cincinnati. He went to Purcell, um, Purcell Mary Mary? High, yeah. high School. Yeah. It was an all boys school. Yes, and so. I, I've been in the that arena for the, the longest time. Went to Finley High School uh, four years. Then I went to Bluffton University. So I gradually started to migrate south. Right. Went to Bluffton, a uh, small liberal arts college there. Played uh, played ball there. Got my degree in business uh, management and administration. And Perfect. When I when I graduated, I migrated south to the Cincinnati area. Took a job in, in business and. Um, spent nine years coaching uh in the west claremont district uh sixth grade select boys basketball nice so i wasn't even in high school for the first nine years of my you know uh of, of my time uh, until uh, a few jobs came came open and ultimately led me to to, to loveland but um i was uh, previously previously married um and we had our two our two children and then i just got remarried um, uh, very I, I, recent. Yes, yes. It's September of of twenty of twenty one. So couldn't be couldn't be happier. Uh, I have a great support system, you know, with my wife and my kids and my mom and you know my in laws and 
course the love, loveling community of it has just been it's been great and, and that and that story alone that, that tell, now your dad he played basketball or did he play a different collegiate My sport dad was actually a football at a baseball okay player. he was a football star defensive defensive end had a opportunity he was re, uh, actually recruited by joe paterno the late joe paterno at penn state oh my gosh and, wow um he decided it was weird he decided him and him and uh, my grandmother decided you know they want to go that direction my grandmother was really big into academics and so sent him to a smaller defiance college where he was an all okay. d3 all-american and ended Dang. up breaking his leg at three places the last game of the season as a as a senior ending his you know professional hopes as a wow he did he actually have, have yes he did actually have a tryout for the atlanta falcons um, even after his, his broken day. So athlete. So, yes. <laughs> and, and I know he passed and, yes. and I'm sorry. Um, it was from cancer, correct? Actually, um, he had, had complications with COVID. Co My okay. dad okay. had, um, had, had kidney, um, issues. Okay. And so the COVID kind of, he caught COVID and accelerated it oh. and ended up, uh, passing away. Um, it was very, very ironic. I, I did get a chance to, uh, talk to talk to my dad uh, before passing. He passed away two days after my birthday last last year. So that is so rough. It but but tough. in saying that though, obviously he he taught you a lot because Absolutely. look at where you are. Yeah. What did you let, let's say one thing? What did you take from him with you today? So maybe it was something that he used to say all the time. Uh, your mentality. What what did you take from him? Maybe name one thing. My, my dad was a very very uh, a strong man, both mentally and, and physically. And he would always tell me that, you know, in everything in life that, that you do, you know, you have to work twice as, you know, as twice as hard as, as anyone else. And that's right. his work ethic. You know, I watched my dad growing up, you know, go to work for 12, 14 hours a day just to put myself and my brother in an opportunity to be able to do the things, right. you know, that we wanted. There wasn't anything that we ever wanted for in life. Uh, and that's because of my my dad. If we needed something, he made sure that we wow. that we got it, even if he had to sacrifice for him, right? You know, for himself. And that's what I wanted. You know, I try to do for my, you know, for my kids, put them in a in a position, right, where they they don't have to to struggle. I mean, I went to a uh, private arts liberal college, was thirty thousand a year. I left with no debt, thanks to my my mother and my father. Which is saying something. Yeah, they really they, is. they made sure that and I take it. I should say no debt. I had three thousand dollars worth of debt. My parents, because they wanted me to have responsibility, made me take out a three thousand dollar loan. <laughs> oh my god! The last semester, so that I could start my paying it paying it back and learning some response of wow. responsibility. But three thousand dollars worth of debt, one hundred twenty thousand dollar education. Shoot, you know, I, I I cannot uh, thank them enough for that. And, and you re and you really can't. Wow, that's that's unbelievable. Now, you're two two girls. Yes. What yes. are their names? Uh, my oldest is Alexis. She just turned twenty, uh, two uh, about a week ago. So uh -huh. on the twelfth, on the twelfth, she turned twenty on the twelfth. And then I have a sixteen year old, uh, Madison, who turned sixteen in, in November. Madison is at uh, Lakota West, a sophomore. And, and playing ball, right? Yes. Alexis is uh, an international major over at UC. Uh huh. Um, she's my my smart one. She taught her <laughs> taught herself uh, <laughs> Japanese. Oh my gosh. In high school, she got the uh, you know the little books and things like taught herself Japanese. Spent uh, half a school year in high school in Japan as an exchange student. Dang. Uh, was selected to be one of the uh, students to go over for to Japan uh, for UC. She's going and they had to cancel because of COVID, so she right. won't be able to go for another year. But she decided to buy her own ticket and go to go to Japan in two months and spend ten days over there. Dang! Uh, and, yeah, that that's where she will be when she she graduates. She wants to go over there and teach English. And that's impressive. I mean, it, it's it's set in stone. I already know she's got to go, so I I prepared myself mentally. Yes, for, and it takes um I'd say a lot of independence on her yeah, end, like absolutely. to 
I mean, I don't want to use the word ballsy, but I'm going to. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. For a young woman yeah. to go and make that decision. That's yeah. a, and that attests to you once again. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she's five foot nothing and just, you know, a hundred nothing, you know. It's yeah. Just going to another whole other country. She's on the other end of the pond. And, wow. Uh, I'm extremely proud of her and all of her accomplishments. And, you know, Madison is, is right behind her. And, I mean, Madison is... 4.3 student Dang. over at Lakota, Lakota West. Great student athlete. Yeah, and she she's doing, you know, I don't know what her path will be yet, but I'm sure she'll figure it out. And, oh, yeah. She's 16. Yeah. She's got a little bit of time. We'll, we'll, we'll guide her and support yeah. her in whatever she wants to do. Wow. Um. So, Darnell, let's really touch on coaching and your journey with cancer. And the reason I'm putting those two together because it seemed like they have kind of meshed together oh, yeah. the support that you've gotten in the athletic community. Yeah. Um, they recently had hugs for coach, right? Yeah. Hugs for Darnell yeah. Parker at what was it? The boys basketball yes. game. Um, your girls. I mean, I know I had an interview with Jillian Hayes recently. Yeah. She gave you a shout out. She says she talks to you yeah. almost every day. So yeah. just kind of tell me about how those two things have kind of meshed together more on the positive side. And then just let the community know how you're doing yeah. because everybody, and I don't want to say concerned as in like a bad way, but they're concerned because they care about you. Absolutely. So just tell everybody, you know, with those two things, how it's going. It, it, it's going really, really well. The hardest thing that I had to do was, was last year, um, tell my kids that I had, that I had cancer and that was, it was an emotional day because, you know, I had spoken with Brian uh, Canasser, the AD, I said, hey, I want to tell the, the, the girls, I've already talked to my coaches, you know, can we use, you know, we went to the auditorium and I said, you know, uh, Peggy Johnson was there, the principal, you know, assistant uh, 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 principal, Eric Fry was there as well. And it was just a, a moment where I was able to be vulnerable with my kids and just say, hey, here's what I am dealing with. I don't right. want to put this on you, but it's on you. Right. And, you know, we, we cried it out. We hugged it. We hugged it out. And they really dedicated that that season, you know, to me, the seniors in, um, in, in Tess Broerman. They crushed it. And all it. of the other, yeah, it's all, all Jenna Batch and all the other, you know, seniors, you know, they, they, they really rallied, you know, behind me. And, you know, they knew up front that, hey, coach may be out a day or two because of, because of chemo. Coach may have to miss because of, of a doctor's appointment or something else. And, you know, that whole, that entire year, Last year, I didn't miss one game, and it was it was awesome to be able to, you know, to 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 do that. And, and you guys had a good season. Great season. Yeah, we won. 20, I mean, back to back days. great yes. seasons. He, coach of the year too. Yes. Remember, guys, he was coach <laughs> twice. Yes. Right, yes. and you had one of the best seasons ever. Yeah. Really, two years in a row. I'm going to say two years in a row because, you know, as a coach, different standpoints, yep, right? Absolutely. You can look at offense, defense, stats. It really was two of your best seasons. Yeah, so, it was, it was kudos great. to you. Thank you. It was it was, it was was great. And, you know, this year has been a little bit different because I've had to ramp up my um, my, my treatments and things like that. And, right. Uh, a month ago, I had to hand over the rings to, to my assistants, uh, Keith Braswell. Oh, okay. uh, he, yeah. he's handling kind of the, you know, the, the, the day to day things right. and, and Brad early is also handling kind of some of my administrative duties as well as wow. coaching, you know, the team and handling the day to day. So those two putting their heads together to, to be me and I couldn't thank them enough for, you know, for what they're, you know, what they're doing. And, um, I plan to slowly transition myself back. Right. To the court this week. Right. Uh, I will only coach home games. Okay. For the time being, and um, uh, listen to the doctors, the doctors' orders. But you know, I want to get to you know the support that the community has, you know, brought to me. Not just financially, but just the 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 support, the hugs, the cards, everything that I, I mean. I came home to a stack of just uh. cards, you know, that I took a few days to just get through through them all once wow. I got home, you know, from the Cleveland, you know, from the Cleveland clinic and people that I don't even know are reaching out to me as a coach. You don't, you know, you don't know me, but X, Y, and Z, right. and we're praying for you and this and that. And, you know, it's, I couldn't have chosen a better community to, to coach and, and work in. And then, you know, I remember the Rolling Mondays fundraiser. Yes. 
I mean, that alone, to me, to be a part of that, that was unreal to see how many, especially, I mean, I remember specifically at Bishop's. Yes. That <laughs> was wild. Yeah, it, 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 really it was packed. Was. Yes, it really was. And it's just like all the handshakes and this and, this and that. And it's like, man, I, I never expected you know, any right. of, you know, any of this. And right. It's one thing to get it from your your players and the parents of your players, but for folks that just you may have a third grader that hoping that someday they could they could play for, you know, for me. I mean, that's just fantastic. And it really was. And um, you know, one of the other moments, uh, and honestly, I wasn't able to go to that hugs for coach because I don't know if I was out of town or I think it was my dad's birthday actually, okay. and. When I saw that video of the Pledge of Allegiance yeah. and your face, and uh, I, I like had to turn, I'm sorry, I had to turn uh, it off. I really did. And not because I didn't want to see it, just because yeah. it was so emotional. You guys holding each other, your mom, yeah. yes. you know, you're, you cover, I know sports <laughs> athletes, we cover our faces when we cry because we don't yeah, cry. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, how was that moment for you there on that? Not, that yeah. was unreal to me. Just, just the moment kind of, you know, overtook me because I, you know, I, I knew everything was coming, but when it when it happens, you know, it's just and then you hear the words of the, you know, the announcers and you see the players on both teams, you know, the Winton Woods uh, folks that were there. I mean, it was just, you know, o overwhelming. Like from that and knowing that hey, tomorrow I'm going to Cleveland yeah, Clinic. Yeah. To, you know, you just, you know, I, I was gonna miss all all of that. Oh yeah. And that that was. You know, it was just awesome. I appreciate, you know, Coach Reese, you know, allowing that to, to happen and everything oh, yeah. on a boys, boys game and everyone that was that was there. And, and, and the cool thing, you know, about your journey is you haven't really taken a back seat. You've more spearheaded it with the cancer community, right? Yeah. I mean, I've seen your posts on Facebook. You have just been so positive and encouraging those that are going through this that have yeah. families and young kids. Kind of tell me what has really inspired you to take the opposite of honestly what most people don't do. Yeah. You know, most people they, take they back on get the in their stuff. Yeah, exactly. Tell me why you chose this path. Um, a lot of it has to do with with, with my dad. Um, when I was diagnosed in twenty, I'm got to get my get my years my years right. Yeah, what year is it? You're right. <laughs> but when when I was diagnosed uh, in, in October. Um, my dad was actually at, they were visiting. So they were actually, it was right before my dad caught COVID and they were visiting uh, the house and my dad was there and he was there when I got my diagnosis and he just, he was going through his issues with his kidneys and he's like, you know, just promise, you know, he looked me in the eye and said, just promise me you won't give up, keep your positive attitude and this and that. Knowing everything that he was, he was going through. Wow. You know, and then he gets sick probably about a month, a month later. And, and, and passes um, and so that's where I kind of I say I can handle this a couple of ways I can go into a shell and I can try to take it all on myself or I can stay positive and share my experience and let everyone else in and get that positive support and that's what I decided to you know to do because I'm, I'm an, an extrovert by by nature and so Keeping it all to myself, I right. think would absolutely just, I don't think I would be where I am today. I probably wouldn't be as well off or wouldn't be coaching and this and that. And, you know, I, it, you know, this community, we, you know, we had, you know, some setbacks, you know, with, with the loss of, uh, of Ben, Ben Morrison and, you know, the young, uh, uh Wolf, um, uh, young man, you know, maybe child, but, yeah. you know, just losing them, I'm like, this community needs a, a win, and I got to try to deliver a, a win for, Amen to that. you know, for, for them, so, um, it's, it, for me, it was just always easier to just, hey, here's my story, here's my journey, right, you know, hop along with me, and if it inspires someone that's going through it, you know, I, I, that, that's great, I met a young lady at, um, at Loveland came out to me as like you know senior so I believe she's a cheerleader as a coach you know thanks I was speaking at the high school thanks for everything you know that you said today I'm dealing with my uncle has has cancer mm -hmm. and he's kind of gotten into a shell and this and that and yeah I'm like you know I just let her know hey 
everyone deals with it differently. Don't right. push them or this and that. But if your uncle ever wants to talk, you know, I'm always here. Wow. You know, and I just said, just leave that, leave it for him. And if he'd rather be call him or he'd rather call me, that, right. that's absolutely, absolutely fine. And, you know, I'm unfortunately part of a, a, a new community in, in the cancer community. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we can be a small but mighty, you know, mighty group. And I agree, especially, you know, when we have one of, I would say one of the best nonprofits, Cancer Free Kids. I mean, Absolutely. right down the yeah. road, right here, you know, yeah. and that organization in itself. Oh yeah, it's unbelievable. The money that they raise each year, our seniors uh, have raised. You know, I remember it back from when um, uh, 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 Big Jill Hayes and mm -hmm. Kate Gary were were doing it, and Marie Plitt. You know, we're doing it every single year. It's just like, man, this is awesome. Oh, yes. Even before I was diagnosed, like, right. man, they're, they're absolutely killing it. And, you know, we have seniors this year. Ella Nagel and Rachel, Rachel Yeager uh, are part of that. And it's just like, this is, this is awesome. Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, okay, so we got it. We got it out of the yeah, way. You know, yes. the people know what's going on. Yeah. So let, let's flip it a little bit. Let's, let's talk about... Darnell, what does the future hold for you in regards to, and obviously you're not a mind yeah. reader or anything, yeah. so it's, you know, let's just kind of think about it. What does the future hold for you? What are your goals in regards to personal yeah. coaching uh, in the community? What are some things you may want to get done here in the five to ten years or, you know, yeah. just kind of thinking out loud? Because I'm sure you have oh, spent yeah. time kind of thinking about the future, yes. what uh, you want to accomplish. I mean, absolutely. shoot, you might have a travel list now. <laughs> right, right. you know? So so what are your thoughts on uh, that? Personally, I'd like to, um, you know, once I get to a, to a point where I, you know, I've got my treatments under control. I really would like to go into public speaking as far as, oh, you know, for the, for the cancer, you know, cancer community and, you know, be able to, to raise funds for, you know, for that and tell my story, tell my journey. You know, I don't think I'd be able to, to write a book or anything because it's really not my style, right. but just being able to, to talk with, talk with people and, and visit people in my, in my same, you know, scenario. Right. I've always said I would coach till, till, till 50, you uh -huh. know, and the, the closer I get to, to 50, I still got a ways, but the closer I get, I'm like, ah, it's not enough. Like, you know, I need, need some more time. And I start seeing these little third graders. Yep. That, that yep. I'm like, ah, I'm going to stick around, you know, for, you know, for more, you know, five, 10 years after 50, maybe, right. maybe 60. And right. so, you know, I want to coach you know, here and in Loveland and, you know, for the girls as long as they will. And you want to stay at Loveland. Loveland. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's, it's, it's always tough because I do have, have a daughter, you know, out there and I hardly ever get to see her play as right. she's, you know, at, a, at another school, you know, there, she would probably be the only thing that could draw me away from, you know, from coaching here at Loveland for a couple of right. years is just, you know, it's, we, we have this conversation every every year yeah like, are you okay with this and i only get to see a handful of games you know because she is my you know she is my, my my kid and you know i don't want her to feel to feel left out so, oh yeah she's absolutely she's been very supportive like dad you know do your do your thing over there so as long as she keeps saying that then you know i got the i got the thumbs up you know to continue to to coach it exactly long. now um Let's talk about something kind of fun. So, you know, through this time, you know, some kind of hard times, positive times, you know, what are some places in the community around Loveland? Where are some places maybe that you've hit up that has really brightened your soul, brightened your spirit? Any like restaurants, businesses? I mean, obviously we ain't going everywhere yeah, right. without math, about, willy nilly, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. But like places that maybe have given you that extra boost yeah. on a on a hard day. You know, I love love going to obviously, you know, Bishop's Quarters and I love I love the works. I've always loved the you know the the works. Um, I was just at uh, Kirby's the other the the other day. Yeah. You know I just love and I, I love the bike trail. I love walking the you know the bike trail. Obviously not today because it's it's cold. And oh I did it. You don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, the, in the summer you know spring and summer I love just you know walking through. I mean I just love being you know everywhere everywhere in Loveland. I went the other day just to the high school. You know, I know I couldn't coach or practice, so I went before and checked out the checked yeah. out the girls and the kids and you know, everyone's giving me high fives and, and hugs just walking in the in the high school. Right. And, 
I, I just, it's, it's a wonderful place to, you know, to be. And, you know, as I was coming here today, I drove by the high school and I see the kids using the, the hill at the front of the high school to sled. And I'm like, I mean, that, that, that's cool. You don't see that. Every yeah. Day. I mean, you don't see kids sledding hardly at all anyway. But, I mean, it's, that, that's absolutely cool just to have a place where you can come sled. You know, and I, I just can't get enough of this. You know this community. Oof! I love to hear that. <laughs> I love to hear that. Well, on that note, Darnell, um, you know, final final uh, question here, or not really question, maybe a statement. You know, take the time, look into the camera, thank who you need to thank, say what you need to say to the community. It could be a sentence, it could be two, whatever, whoever you want to speak to, give a shout out to the community would love it. Yeah, absolutely. First, you know, I like to, you know, thank. The, the community as a whole for you know not only accepting me but also accepting you know my you know my, my family um into the community you know we apologize for the abrupt interview cutoff as our camera shut off on us the last couple minutes of our interview with coach parker we are in the process of investing in some new camera equipment so we can avoid this happening in the future we appreciate you tuning in to What's in Loveland's DNA featuring Darnell Parker and hope you have enjoyed learning more about Coach Parker and all he does for the Loveland community. Stay tuned for more interviews brought to you by Loveland Magazine TV. This is Cassie Mattia wishing all of you Loveland Magazine readers a beautiful day.